good morning uh, organizers participants dreamers and doers after a long two years of unseen unfathomable stay at home model today we are back on campus however of course this year this, this event could not be held um, on physical mode next year we promise we'll come back to you with a lot more but uh, i take this opportunity to invite all the participants in thanking the organizers for their immense inputs immense work that they have put in the arrangements that they have put in in making this a success such events at this scale conducted online will be one of its kind and i hope that all of you enjoy your time here digitally our world has changed and so have we today is the world of today is the world of course of participation competition and accomplishment so i hope that all of you enjoy your participation you compete hard you make a lot of friends and accomplish what you never thought was possible with these words i declare we know 2022 open sound is the word that is fought to ambition an enemy ambushed to shatter your will its prayers forever the man with a mission and bubs but to courage and patience and skill hate it with hatred that's deep and undying for once it's welcome it will break any man whatever the goal you are seeking keep trying and answer this demon by saying i can a very warm good morning everyone welcome to we know 2022 to we know means to sort until only the best remain we know this year is being conducted in the form of a multifaceted event where in retro contemporary and futuristic themes are being explored in ways never experienced before at we know 22 we aim to create a participative atmosphere that not only aims to celebrate the holistic pedagogical approach the department proudly embraces but also to put forth a celebration of the engaging student community that it houses we are proud to be hosting a bunch of talented and multifaceted individuals from various institutions all across the country today we have with us our hod dr pinaki nandan patnaik and esteemed members of the faculty now i request our hod to address the gathering thank you uh, sandra uh, for this opportunity now as a teacher i always uh, take pride in taking the mic and speaking so uh, thank you uh, i believe uh, the renditions that you will go through um uh, through these events that are uh, i think cross functional you have marketing events hr events uh, you have uh, finance events um and of course uh, i think the icing on the cap is uh, icing on the cake of course is your uh, you know stand up by uh, uh, navin uh, richards who's by the way also a ba llb student uh, grad so i hope that you will hear legally accurate jokes so thank you uh, very much uh, sandra i hope all of you enjoy uh, in organizing others enjoy participating and uh, learn a lot together all right thank you so hello guys am i audible yeah so a very good morning to one and all present here department of management studies salta university of law welcomes you to the event which us It's a pleasure to have all of you here today. So let's start off by introducing our team. I am K Sahiti, Assistant Secretary of the club, and Harshendu Pandey is on the meet, and he is the president of the club. So it's a honor to introduce the uh, judges for today. That is Professor Vignya Patnaik. So Professor Vignya Patnaik is a gold medalist in MA Economics, and her area of research is diversity and equality management system. and uh, we have second just professor vivek pani so so he has published various articles on consumer brand relationship i would request the judges to speak few words uh, very good morning one and all i welcome you all to vino so this pictures is a marketing event and uh, we look forward to 
listening to some great ideas i'm sure we all will have a very good learning experience uh, today and i welcome you all once again to norms nalsa university of law have a great day good morning everyone uh, i welcome you all to our program we know our annual fest to the department of management studies uh, it's a very it's a great initiative and we are really interested and looking forward to see some wonderful ideas all the best all of you we can start now so let's start let's start off with what is the event first uh, so pitchers is an event where every participant gets to pitch their own uh, obsolete object which of their choice and they have to present it to the panel so this is a test to, to the contestants or uh, looking into the selling and pitching abilities as these are the main marketing core uh, uh, abilities so as you all know the competition is run on two phases the phase one wherein each contestant had to submit a word document uh, regarding the product name and the obsolete product that they have chosen then second is like they have to choose a target audience marketing strategy and how why is the object obsolete and how why would they revive it revive it so after the uh, completion after looking into everyone's uh, documents so there are few people who got shortlisted and i congratulate uh, everyone present here because you've been shortlisted for the second phase so now uh, uh, all the contestants have to do a, a presentation to the uh, judges and have to subject on their product and why would they revive it so let's start off with the first participant uh, Charumati GL. Charumati, you have the presenter, right? Yeah, very good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, uh, shall I uh, share my screen and start? Or is there any procedure? Hello. Yeah, please share your screen. I request I all the participants to mute their mics. All the presenters are requested to switch on the videos. Okay. Able to see my screen? Uh, please confirm if uh, anyone yes, is able, able to see. Yes, able to see you. Yeah. I'm sharing my screen as well. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for the confirmation. Yeah. A very good morning, everyone. I'm Charumati from Trichy, working in uh, Tata Consultancy Services. I'm happy to be a part of this competition. And I have chosen uh, Alarm Clock as my obsolete product. Uh, I'll continue explaining wh why did I choose this product further. Yeah. Why Alarm Clock? Because it is a need of the hour. Considering this pandemic, digital devices have intruded uh, into our lives so much. It is affecting our mental health of children uh, because of online classes and much more. And it has immense potential to gain market share as well. You can see this graph. This is the product lifecycle graph uh, where alarm clock, uh, alarm clock is in declining stage, but it has potential to rebirth itself. And it covers wide range of target audience. It is not specific to some group of people. And alarm functionality still exists and it will forever exist. But only uh, the only thing is it has been integrated with some other device. So we can. Uh, so we can uh, sell it as a unique cell. We can. Uh, find a unique selling point of alarm clock and sell it uh, sell it to the consumer so it has its rebirth potential and uh, who are our target audience 
everyone men women of all age gender lgbtq everyone is a target audience but i have considered few uh, focus groups uh, considering uh, the need of the alarm clock school and college students and working professionals and digital media addicts and health freaks who wants to lead a uh, healthy lifestyle these are my focus group why did alarm clock become obsolete because it uh, everyone knows alarm alarm uh, everyone hates hearing the sound of alarm it's so obvious so it is the most hated invention when i googled i found it uh, it is a hated invention and the sound of ticking while we are sleeping some people are even sensitive to minor sounds so the sound of ticking might be a disturbance and high volume of sound uh, as far as i have heard and I, I have used the sound of alarm will induce anxiety uh, in the persons as they are in sleeping sleeping cycles are different so the slow uh, rise of uh, volume will not be there suddenly a high pitch of volume will be heard while we are sleeping when the alarm sound uh, goes and mobile phones have integrated feature of alarm that's the main uh, main competitor of this product and here are uh, some research uh, i have done uh, sleep is the founder of sleep easily who is also a psychotherapist uh, tells uh, these words uh, some people don't set an alarm but then look at their clock when they awaken during the night this can cause anxiety how the sound of alarm uh, uh, do uh, when it rings it causes anxiety Similarly, uh, it interrupts without alarm clock, we are not free of anxiety. In between our sleeps, uh, anxiety will disturb us uh, to check the clock frequently. And uh, as I said, alarm clock is a hated invention, but in the study, MIT conducted a study, and in that, self edges out alarm clock. Sorry, I could hear some disturbance. I'd request uh, others to be on mute. Yeah, Thomas, mute yourself. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes. Uh, and the, uh, the one interesting news I came across is uh, around 2017, a school in London presented alarm clocks to their school students. Uh, in the intention uh, to make the usage of phones less because it is disturbing, disturbing their sleep. And coming to my marketing strategy, uh, these are some key points I'm going to address. Uh, changing uh, consumer perception, product differentiation, communication strategy, distribution channels, and after sales relationship. I'll be covering one by one. Changing consumer perception. Alarm clock is not only a timekeeper. In the, now, now it, it is not. It, it should not be considered as a timekeeper. Till now, it is uh, positioned as timekeeper in my mind, in in our mind. So, it uh, after uh, like now my main focus of this uh, marketing strategy throughout should be, it is not only a timekeeper. It 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 can be digital detox device and productivity tool. And we should position our products such that uh, it is a digital detox device, a productivity tool, via messaging. Our messaging, like brand, uh, brand, uh, uh, brand messaging, should be lifestyle change, focusing on lifestyle change. And some examples are not only to wake up or best gift for a loved one, as reliable as your mom. So these are some examples I have uh, uh, given here. So positioning it as a digital detox device uh, can re revive this product to a considerable extent. And what are the product differentiation we can do to the existing, uh, even though a few, actually alarm, class, uh, alarm clocks are digital and non-digital. I'm focusing more on non-digital. And uh, I have added few points. Some clocks have glowing dark powder, but every clock can be, uh, incorporated with this feature because while sleeping when we are seeing the mobile the light coming the light uh, 
the coming from the mobile is disturbing our sleep and it is not good uh, for us so we can use glow in dark powder which is not too intense but still it is visible while uh, uh, seeing in the night and sound of ticking can be reduced uh, it is like technical enhancement we can work on and pomodoro technique everyone who is uh, studying in the college or school nowadays are looking for productive ways to learn and productive strategies to work on their uh, exams and uh, and much more so pomodoro technique is in one uh, one such 25 minutes of studying and 5 minutes of break so we can incorporate the power in the product or again i'm hearing some disturbance yeah one minute uh, sharumati i'll just uh, request i request everybody else in the meeting to please mute yourselves gentle reminder please mute yourselves those who are not speaking thank you we are very sorry uh, there's this problem we are very sorry i have no problem yeah uh yeah i am continuing myself yeah pomodoro yeah pomodoro technique is uh, 25 minutes of studying and 5 minutes of break this is like scientifically proven uh, technique which can be implemented uh, for a uh, effective uh, preparation of exams or anything so this feature can be inbuilt uh, rather than setting alarm every 25 minutes or 5 minutes it can be inbuilt future feature in the products so Uh, our target segments can buy and alarm sound reset hearing monotonous the, the one feature which is in phone is we can customize our alarm sounds according to our wish, wish. and even the study show if, if you are hearing one sound continuously for waking up the most hated sound it will become most hated sound and it will it will be boring also so alarm sound reset that customization option can be uh, done at least for a fixed cycle of 30 days or something it can be done so an alarm sound uh, program to rise mildly from lower to higher volume this is the main thing uh, that has to be done and it, uh, if it is if start if it starts at higher volume it affects our health also so this uh, these uh, things should be addressed moving on to communication strategy the first thing is bookmarks in self help self help books I have been reading 5 AM Club and few other uh, self help books, top self self help books. Every uh, author suggests to uh, not to use mobile phones while we wake up. So if we are advertising a product in the bookmarks of self help books, that will uh, significantly increase our sales of alarm clocks and promoting. Hashtag digital detox in social media media by influencers. It's no doubt that uh, millennials or this uh, generation people are so much influenced by the uh, actor, actress, and other influencers of YouTube. Everything. So hashtag digital detox with some uh, short stories or some life experiences. We can promote it uh, through them. So free goodies to students. We can uh, give free goodies to students conducting a competition. or uh, to promote a reading habit we nowadays bookmark with a timer is also that uh, so we can explore those strategies to uh, communicate our brand or product social media ads tv ads commercial magazines those uh, content should be triggering our emotions uh, it can be a fear or it i mean uh, uh, it can be fear at the end it should it should uh, trigger some uh, remedy or uh, like alarm clock is that to rescue uh, uh, you can now uh, you, you need not consider that fear it can it can promote in such a, it can be promoted in such a way and creative display ads in cafe and public areas libraries uh, can be done One and second. distribution channels second yeah so you're running out of time can you wrap it up fast Yeah, yeah yeah sure last one minute please wrap it up yeah yeah distribution channels e-commerce platforms official websites can be done supermarkets exhibition and partnering with education institutions as our focus group is mainly falls on education institutions and uh, b2b partnerships uh, with uh, some companies uh, gifting the employees with alarm clocks with customized brand sounds can also be done 
Uh, so these are some ways and as per sales service nowadays people are expecting what uh, like they want some guarantee for the product so service center uh, partnering with not necessarily uh, dedicate a service center for the brand we can partner with existing third party toll free number and newsletter subscription like uh, how to be productive some kind of newsletter with those type of content can be uh, to our customers and lo loyalty and uh, uh, trust building strategy these are some loyalty and trust building strategies yeah thank you thank you for the opportunity thank you uh, charumati very impressive presentation uh, thank you so much for presenting it here at nalsar uh, i have a couple of questions so i didn't see how your products uh, your product prototype so basically it's a i'm guessing it's a mechanical device because you're saying digital detox yeah am i audible yeah so you're saying it is a digital uh, digital detox so i'm guessing it's a mechanical device so if it's a mechanical device with very less features don't you think it's an easily replicable product and how would you counter replicability of a product by your competitors yeah uh, sure uh, the quality matters every product most of the products can be replicated that's why competitor brands are there uh, in every segment so the quality of service the experience we provide uh, the unique selling point should not be only focused on product alone it it should be like after sales service i was telling right uh, that one and newsletter subscription like every month or every 3 months when we are targeting uh, customers existing customers with the mails or uh, some other platform we are communicating with them and the brand uh, is recalled so i think that will be differentiated like rather than only focusing on the product the quality of materials we use also matters but so the, the, the quality of material because it's a mechanical device right so there's very less complexity in building this product right so it's easily replicable right so yeah. and if, if it's a mechanical product the price of the product is not high right Ah, okay. so then how would you with so much of with a very thin wafer thin margin how would you do an after sale service like what would you take home if you are doing it with wafer thin margins right say uh, for example yeah. i i can explain my question did you get my question uh can you explain once again yeah. what some so you, so this should be sub 100 product right because it's a mechanical very simple product right okay. it's a sub 100 rupees product right so your say your product is 99 rupees so you must have incurred a cost of say 49 rupees or 40 rupees whatever and the rest is all your margins along the channel partners right right so with this kind of wafer thin margins that you have do you think an after sale service would really uh, be possible is it really financially viable yeah uh, this is something to consider as well and we can expand our hello yeah I, what happened go on go on I, i'm listening to you okay yeah uh, going further uh, the thing is it is non digital but moving further we can make it as led or lcd platform like it is some uh, so it is readable to some extent rather than mechanical so we can expand our business also uh, and after sales uh, uh, service uh, in the sense we are not going to provide for lifetime so if a product if they buy a product we are going to give for 6 months or 3 depending on the cost i am going to segment my product from basic level to premium level so it need not be 100 itself so it can be 1000 also it, nowadays customizing uh, the product for gifts also is possible uh so the materials we use can be simple steel iron or it can be gold also like we can customize according to the uh, wish of the customers hi charumati so as uh, sir asked and uh, uh, what you replied on the basis of that i'm asking you a question so you said that yeah. you can uh, price can vary right it can start from it could be 100 it could be 1000 or 2000 whatever it is right so uh, yes. 
uh, wherever we are going uh, like morning to night we have our mobile phones in our hand right which has a alarm clock so you can easily use it so why would i um, invest 1000 rupees uh, to buy an alarm clock first of all second thing uh, second question for you is tell me five features okay which are there in a alarm clock which is integrated in the mobile phone which you want to implement or incorporate in a uh, system alarm clock system which is not there in an alarm clock and you want to uh, bring that change any five features yeah uh, answering your first question uh, i'm going to sell it as emotion not just a alarm clock it is going to be device we are going to touch and feel in the night the last thing you are going to see in the night and the first thing you are going to see in the morning so uh, that's why I, I targeted that gift uh, gift segment that's why someone wants to give a gift like they want to remember they want to be remembered the last thing in the night and the first thing in the morning they can be they can gift an alarm clock so it is going to be emotion not just the product and the second thing is uh, five features the first thing is the sound the sound of it uh, it should mildly rise from uh, low volume to higher volume that's what the mobile company does and the second thing is uh, uh, customization of sounds and the third thing is ticking sound will not be there in the mobile and the fourth is uh, timer and uh, the some other features are not there in the alarm clock so uh, there can be some technical enhancement in that side and the uh, fifth thing can be uh, mobile phones yeah timer and stopwatch also can be incorporated what about snooze yes yeah, snooze is there in the alarm clock existing alarm clock there? That that is easily uh, like it is placed on the top of the clock such that it can be easily uh, snoozed. In the mobile phone, you need to swipe swipe it right. In one touch, the clock can be snoozed. Snoozed. Sarumati, thank you so much. It has been a pleasure listening to you. Yes. You're, you've done a great job. Uh, thank you once again. It was lovely listening to you, Charumati. All the best. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you, Charumati. It was really nice to have you here. And so we'll go with the second participant, Sakshi Sharma. Hello. Uh, am I visible? Yes. Okay. Hi, Sakshi. How are you doing today? Hello, sir. I'm okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Sakshi, could you please give us an introduction? Uh, yes, sir. Sure. Uh, can you give me a minute? Yeah, yeah, sure. Is my screen visible? Hello? Yes. Okay. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Sakshi Sharma, and the product that I've chosen for revival is a piggy bank. Uh, I actually am currently a student of PGP1 in IM Indore. So one big question that must be looming over your heads right now must be why? Why have I cho chosen this such antiquated product? Well, when I deep dive into my childhood, one thing that comes up every single time is a piggy bank. I've used this product a lot as a child. I think my parents primarily bought it to teach me about personal finances and savings. However, it ended up serving much more purposes for me. I remember carrying the bank along for several days when I was first gifted it, jiggling it vigorously to hear the clinking of the coins and using the clinking sound to estimate the number of coins inside. I think it was never just a bank to me. It was an emotion. Perhaps this mysterious friend who not only safeguarded my funds, but also taught me how to keep my anxiety and exhilaration in check. And thanks to the childhood practice, I'm more cognizant of the uh, importance of money now. I wish to pass on my holistic experience to others, which is why I've chosen this product. I feel that I believe in its potential and hence can also convince people about the same. Moving on, I'd first like to discuss what are the reasons for the product being obsolete. So I think that there are primarily three factors which have made the product go out of existence. These include technological innovation. So technological innovation has actually spurred technological penetration as well, which has made owning smartphones much, much easier today. 
This has resulted in the substitution of all devices with a single device, which is a mobile phone. Second is the changing customer preferences. The customer preferences have also changed over time. This has to do with the increasing digitization, socio-economic and cultural improvement, as well as development. And finally, the banking processes have become much more trustworthy. So the advent of technology has eased the process of online banking and over time, the technology has only improved. In the wake of these developments, parents are now using uh, cyber piggy banks or online proxy accounts or financial apps to instill the practice of saving in kids. This has made the product go irrelevant and out of existence. I will now be unfolding my plan of revival. So first thing, first, my target audience. My target audience is primarily children aged 7 to 15 years of age. Now why? Now as for many studies, cognitive abilities in children begin to develop only after 6 years of age. In that case, 7 appears to be a golden number to start instilling financial responsibility in kids by granting them a partial autonomy. Secondly, you must be wondering why not after 15? Well, given the current purchase intentions and preferences, most kids own a smartphone uh, by the time they're 16 years of age. And the smartphone, as I already mentioned, already has many financial apps, cyber piggy banks, and then proxy bank accounts in which you can actually invest or save in order to learn about financial literacy or the importance of saving. So this serves as a substitution to our product or substitute to our product and makes a product irrelevant, which is why the target audience age has been capped at 15. Next, the marketing strategy. The marketing strategy typically covers the four P's and the STP, but because I've already included components of STP, which is segmentation, targeting and positioning in my revival plan, I'll be talking about it uh, afterwards. First of all, I'll be taking up the four P's, which is the price, the place, the product and the promotion. So essentially, first the place in which I'll be talking about the distribution channels. Now, I've thought of three distribution channels for this product, which include e-commerce platforms. It includes uh, independent retail stores and then large chain stores like Big Bazaar and Walmart. So ours was essentially be, be a phase distribution, beginning first with e-commerce platforms, then independent retail stores and big supermarket chains. So we wish to launch the product in different phases in these uh, channels. Why are we doing the same? That is why we're moving first from e-commerce to independent retailers and then to big large chains is because we want to move from a low margin dealer to a high margin dealer so that when we negotiate with them, it gives us a good bargaining power. Secondly, the price. So given the current inflation in the economy, as well as the low willingness to spend on unnecessary goods, the goods should be uh, priced on the basis of cost plus pricing technique, wherein the margin should be between 10 to 15%. Third, the product. As you already aware, the product is a piggy bank, but uh, the fact that I like to accentuate here is that it should come in many shapes and forms. So for essentially, it should come also in gullaks and it should also be available in customized forms uh, like a Chota Bheem, uh, Chota Bheem cartoon piggy bank, for instance. Why do I wish to do the same? This allows us to practice price discrimination and sell the product in different markets. For instance, we could segment the population on the basis of income level and sell, let's say, gullaks in rural areas and then the customized piggy banks in probably urban areas. Fourth is the promotion. Uh, I've thought of three ways of doing promotions. One is through conventional TV ads. Second is unconventional marketing techniques, which I'll talk about later on. And the third is blogs. So essentially, the TV ads as well as the unconventional marketing techniques are used to target the consumers, that is the children. However, because we know that the consumers and the customer here is totally different because it is the parents who are making the purchase for their kids, we'll also essentially like a medium to reach out to the parents, which is why I've incorporated a third uh, product pro promotion channel, which is the blogs. So blogs should be used to target the uh, parents by invoking or triggering feelings of nostalgia. For the ads can also be uh, used for the same purpose. Finally, coming on to the revival plan. So I thought of five elements for reviving the product. One is product messaging. As mentioned before, the customers are the parents, whereas the consumers are the kids. We essentially need to convince the parents about uh, this product. To do this, the message should not only highlight the financial aspect of money saving that children learn through this product, but also the fact that this 
owning such a product will give your child a more holistic experience in the sense that it would tend to make them more grateful as well as responsible. So my suggestion here would be to highlight the control, exhilaration, the non-gadget time, the knowledge that children develop by using this product. Second is a catchy tagline or a name. The taglines also have to be made appealing to the parents, which is the customers. So I think nostalgic messages can really help because they can trigger the parents' memories and then can uh, kind of uh, trigger them to make the purchase. So I've thought of two taglines. So one is piggy bank, once a safe haven for your money, now for your child. And uh, the second one, which is basically to highlight the non-digital time that comes with the product is basically a non-digital friend for your di highly digitized kid. Third is unconventional marketing. Uh, so I thought of product placement and cartoons like Chota Bhim and Doraemon, wherein the main character like Chota Bhim can be shown to put his money in uh, uh, a gullak or a piggy bank. So this can be used to garner the attention of the children. Ads with these characters can also be done. Finally, the alternative views. Uh, people think that the product has served it its purpose when children no longer use it to store money. However, we can communicate additional value uh, by highlighting the other purposes that the product can serve. To quote an incident from my personal life, I use my piggy bank to store the testimonials from my friends that I promised myself that I would use or read 30 years later. So we can communicate something on the same sorts to the consumers or the customers as well. And finally, the bundling packages. So the pro product could essentially be bundled with, let's say, a pen stand or a three combo lace or a notebook set, a five notebook set in order to uh, increase its penetration and reach. Thank you. Sakshi, great display of your skill, great display uh, and of your skill and knowledge. But I have a couple of questions. OK, yes. so today uh, the first one is uh, regarding the product uh itself so in this day and age when we have companies like white hat junior which is trying to equip students with coding from a very tender age don't you think this piggy bank will not uh, will be a deterrent because uh, we're talking about hedging inflation today right with piggy bank you can't hedge inflation right so how would you counter this particular message that is my first question you can answer this and then i can go to the second question no, sir, I'll actually like to have both the questions and then I'll answer it. All right. So the second question is your distribution strategy is very good. And I like the way you're sequencing it. You just want to do D2C first, if I'm uh, e-commerce first. Yeah. Is it going to be D2C or uh, B2B2C, your e-commerce? Sir, it's D2C first and then it's D2C. Yeah. OK. OK. So then why, like with D2C, you will have good margins. I totally get it, right? But then why do you want to uh, get into the other distribution channels when you're already enjoying good mar margins there? OK, why don't you just pump up your D2C channel only? That's the second question. OK, so that's it. I, I restrict myself to these two questions. Yeah. Uh, so, so the second question I'll take up first. So uh, yeah. why am I actually going towards the phased implementation? I think is actually clear to you. But I would essentially like to increase the reach, right? Now, e-commerce is something, so even though the economy and the country has become highly digital, there's still rural areas where the technology penetration is not that high. And I would essentially want my product to reach there as well in order to revive it fully. So I plan to then launch it in independent retail stores and big chains, which are also present in rural areas. So that is your, uh, that on, I hope that answers your second question. And the first question regarding hedging. So I think because I'm, or uh, doing this only for kids aged 7 to 15 and they might not be aware of the concept of inflation. I think that, I mean, I don't unnecessarily want to highlight it with my product uh, because uh, children are not very aware and the amount that you store in a piggy bank is typically very nominal. So uh, I don't essentially feel that that is going to serve as a deterrence. Also, okay. uh, uh, so uh, even like 20 years ago, uh, coding for these kids, especially for these kindergarten kids also, was something that we was unheard of, but we've started it, right? So uh, why can't you think of that particular idea? Uh, so me, I mean, we 
we have started it but then it has also received a lot of uh, you know controversy it has uh, attracted a lot of controversy and all due to the fact that you are not supposed to push children into uh, like these life choices at such a young age so essentially what you're doing is imposing a few things on them when you're doing already enrolling them in a white hat junior etc you're not allowing them to make your own choices which is essentially what a piggy bank will do for your child right so uh it will provide them the autonomy they can save as much as they want they can use as much as they want so i think uh i mean that's just so i'm asking that very fair very fair okay so i'm just trying to understand uh, the products uh, features okay so in fact if you start early you can the compounding you know adds a place to your favor that is why i was just trying to understand if you can put, go in that direction right very well thought of strategy i i really like the way you've positioned the product good job done thank you so much for coming to now sir thank you thank you sir. i pass it on to professor vinaya patnai hi sakshi um, first of all uh, lovely presentation yeah and uh, yeah when you were talking about the target target audience uh, with, uh, for you it is like 7 to 15 years right that age group so normally uh, so far as i can understand uh, we do that to our children or uh, just to inculcate the habit of saving and also to make them understand what is the value of money right so do you think that uh, having a piggy bank at a tender age helps us understand the consumption saving and investment plan in future ma'am i think it worked out for me very well okay i think okay uh because it is worked out for me i think it might work out for others as well because i was actually uh, i was i used to spend all the money that i used to get from my relatives at 5 to 6 i used to run to the shop and buy things but as soon as i got a piggy bank i kind of got to understand the importance of saving and till now i kind of i mean now i don't have a piggy bank to do the same stuff but I, right now i also maintain an excel sheet for my calculations but i think the practice took root in my childhood and i kind of have inculcated it from there and then and because it has become so ingrained in my routine it's just much easier for me to do at this age even though let's say the specific components like the investment decisions in terms of bond stocks and other things have not come into the early age okay so and uh, you were talking about the designs like right? cartoon characters and all to attract kids so uh, what other designs comes to your mind if you will be given a chance to design a piggy bank what would you do mom um, i've not really thought about it but i think uh i'll probably go for cartoons one and then i will also go for simple good looks that you can smash so that serves two purposes one it gives you a adrenaline rush when you're doing it and then it kind of shows you your savings so it's a win win for the kids and also for the company because it will essentially allow us to sell more gullas you know very very nice okay okay um a last question for you uh, sakshi um see whenever there is uh, when you're selling a product uh chances of getting negative feedback is really really high so what is your strategy to deal with that to deal with negative feedback uh ma'am um to deal with negative feedback i think uh, uh, taking all the feedback and only try to make more improvements to my product so essentially last standard we talked about personalization and i hadn't really thought about it from a piggy bank perspective but i would essentially try to inculcate it in my piggy bank as and when i get you know different recommendations probably a note saving pocket and something like that yeah of course because uh, because the range is really high like 7 to 15 so 7 to 15 choice also changes right the uh, attraction also changes some like 7 year kid will be happy to see chota beam but 15 year old won't be happy to see chota beam yes ma'am right so for 15 year old you have to plan something else yes, so uh, and 15 year old is a 10th grade pass 10th out grade, right yeah Right. So yeah. maybe maybe that why I asked this question to you that uh, any anything new that you want to do any any new design. So probably because NFT is the big and rising trend, I might make an NFT sort of you know piggy bank. So okay, just give some information regarding the you know NFTs or cryptos on the back of it. So it serves to okay. Work. So you are 
you are okay. basically coming to the same point then right yeah. you said so so whatever i was just saying you you are, you want you would want to hedge inflation so you're also talking the same thing then yes sir so then you will have two different target groups you will not go for 7 to 15 as one target group will that be a strategy so you'll have you have a change in strategy there so so essentially uh, i mean the idea was also to allow uh, you know the consumers to get a personalized product if they want i mean that channel i never i've not touched upon it but i think uh, i i mean i'm sorry that i assumed it to be implicit i should have mentioned it but that option was already there so uh, let's say if a particular child is interested in let's say chess he can get it customized or you know i can uh, give some information with respect to that so yeah i try to do that but i'll not uh, essentially not segment the target audience i'll just offer them different product propositions or different product samples you know the product type do you think that would be a too costly affair thing that you are getting at customizing and all um sir i am not so rather have different ta- target group and have an addressable audience and when you're trying to do crypto nfts and all so maybe for 12 to 15 which is quite a sizable number maybe you can and there are bank accounts for 12 to 15 people also so yes. now the onus is on the parents to teach them what is inflation and how to hedge inflation right so yes. maybe you should you can consider it's only you can consider but it's your product and there's no three yes sir i'll definitely consider it Yeah. All right. Thank you, Sakshi. Thank you. Pleasure talking to you. Welcome to Nalsar. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sakshi. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. All the best. Thank It was you. a very great presentation, Sakshi. Thank you, ma'am. So, thank you. And next we have Janvi Boy. So we will be presenting for PPT. Am I audible and visible both? Yes, you are. Good morning, everyone. I am Janavi Bhoyer. I am student of National Institute of Technology, Tiruchirappalli, and the product I have chosen is a leaf utensils. So I'd like to begin with your permission. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Welcome, welcome, Janavi. Yeah, certainly. Life is adorned in the bliss of a nature, the spiritual love of a man and a nature. Nature beholds the key to our success, sworn in to protect the sanctity of nature. We are eco cult. We are here to save the planet. next slide recycling nature and upcycling culture is what we believe no more plastic sustainability has to be the way of life to be the way of business say yes to the green and our vision is for clean and green and green planet next slide i'd like to explain with the help of a short video can you please play that Uh, just a minute actually there is no, uh, there is a voice over i have added it's not audible we are getting it sorted uh plastic pollution is increasing day by day it's harmful for every species of earth It's affecting land, waterways, oceans, living organisms, marine animals. In the world, more than 200 million tons of plastic are consumed each year. Only 21% is recycled. 158 million tons of waste is disposed of in landfills. This large amount of plastic waste inevitably enters the environment. But how can we save our earth? Switch to eco-friendly products. The Arika palm tree products are being produced for sustainable resource through eco-friendly processes. Hundred percent chemical-free, no added pesticides. Make sure it's acceptable to all green stores. As an Arika leaf manufacturer, we have set our products to meet international quality standards through optimized manufacturing processes with hygienic conditions. 
How do we manufacture these disposable products? Our manufacturing process includes collection of fallen leaves, cleaning in fresh water, heat pressing, and cutting it, cutting the disposal of product back to the old manner. By creating and promoting Arikan products, we can produce biodegradable and sustainable resources. So, what are you waiting for? Switch to food friendly products. What's so special about Arika leaf products? Fallen Arika leaves, 100% biodegradable, microwave safe, refrigeration safe, chemical free, non toxic. Thank you so much for watching this video. Next slide, please. The biggest problem is that why the leaf utensils have become obsolete. Because people nowadays are used to consume plastic. They like something fancy and that is cheaper alternative. They find the old traditional leaf utensils as unattractive. They don't find it trendy to carry with them or use them. Apart from that, they find that sustainable products are expensive. And also, they don't have much, much faith on the claims of a sustainable products such as leaf utensils or any brand that claims it. So, we would like to enforce and build a strong communities in a rural areas that are the self-help groups when they collect their leaves to create a stronger and prosperous communities around the company. We would like to make people believe old is gold, old can be beautiful and sustainability is the key to future. Our organization revolves around the people and the planet while profit is the outcome to the society as a whole. Next slide, please. So the major problem is the unattractiveness. So we have tried to come up with the various alternatives when it comes to boxes for the biryani, while the uh, boxes for takeover from the restaurants from the QS are also the trays to present some starters and also the soup bowls, uh, then cutleries also like the spoons and the forks and the plates and many more like bowls so that everything can be replaced when it comes to the tableware apart from the plastic and people can use these products even it seems more attractive to them next slide please so what are the benefits does these products offer why you should switch so first of all it saves the planet biodegradable made from the fallen leaves no plants or trees are being cut down so even if you talk about the paper plates, the trees are being cut down. Next is no more plastic. Eco-friendly. It's natural and attractive, which makes it stylish, elegant and unique. It's It also gets decomposed within just 7 to 10 days. Also, it's organic and eco-friendly. No glues, bonding agents or chemical plastics or waxes has been used. Apart from this, these are durable and versatile. It stands up to hot foods, liquids and direct sunlight and can hold liquid for around 6 to 8 hours. And also, it can be microwave and uh, it's a refrigerator safe. Next slide. So how are we able to offer so many benefits? So that is the secret of our manufacturing process. We are creating a value throughout the entire chain, right from the collection of fallen leaves from the local communities to the cleansing with the water, then heat pressing, followed by each trimming and cleaning. And after that, the sterilization shrink wrapping and the carton boxing which is made from again the waste card boxes and the next is the disposable uh, disposal of plates and after that it goes back to earth as a manure because our product it's reaching the uh, n2 k2o2 and also it's reaching the phosphorus so it's a zero waste closed loop life cycle so it's creating a value throughout the entire manufacturing process till the distribution next slide So our target, so if we, so our target market, so if we look at the figures, the the biodegradable tableware market, it's been growing around 6.1 percent from the 2019 to 2026. And our target market, if we look at the international, that's USA, Germany, Germany, because we might be aware about the packaging law being passed there. And apart from that, the Nordic countries and also the Denmark and the Middle East. Uh, 
the next is the b2b clients as we have seen the taj hotels is, is trying many alternatives to go towards the sustainability and they have taken various initiatives like collaborating with uh, uh, the sustainable pr uh, giving products like the bamboo toothbrush and all so i think this is the right target market for us apart from this itc hotels in their latest reports uh, shows that the major threat to the environment is what the uh, disposables of plastic which which we are using and they're trying to incorporate sustainability into their practices so that's again a target market then the fun ecotel it's a complete hotel chain that work towards the eco-friendly and the sustainable products and its main aim is towards the environment next is the ecor group it can it has various brands ranging from novotel to the banyan tree and they have also been doing various csr projects and uh sustainability uh, projects and competitions since few years and trying to incorporate in their practices so they are again a target market for us then the ethnic restaurants if we go to any chinese or japanese restaurants uh like momo man in uh, ahmedabad or shihai in mumbai we have mainland china apart from that wow momo is a rising one so if we look at the ambience there or uh, the kind of uh, Amb uh, ambience is created so our products are more suitable to them and it looks more attractive and it will seems like they care for the nature and apart from that even parties and functions can also use our product then the uh, when the plastic was banned the zomato and swiggy these delivery food partners were actually looking what are the best viable solution for them to uh, the best alternatives so i so they are again the target market the similar the qsr this is haldiram bikaner um even when uh, during the plastic ban, the Haldiram has been tried many alternative products. So it, this, so we can target them. Then McDonald's has been uh, trying to work on the SGD goals and the three R that is reduce, reuse and recycle. And if we see for the biryani in India, the biryani by kilo, they came up with their earthen pot. So their competitor is a Behru's biryani. So Behru's biryani needs some competitive edge. So I think our products can offer them as we have the specially designed boxes or the tiffin kind of thing next slide please so if we have to go to market and revive ourselves if we look at the indian market uh, then specially or even if we want to make the people believe that sustainable is not expensive and it is not at the cost of our planet the the 4a model i'm proposing that is availability affordability acceptability and awareness so availability we would be available on e-commerce websites such as amazon and flipkart Apart from that, retail stores, DMART and Big Bazaar in India, if you talk about foreign, we can go for the Walmart and uh, Sears and many more. The next is a B2B bulk orders via our website and affordability so we are having wide range of products from the spoons to the plates and the boxes that we are selling also uh, we are thinking when we would be going for uh, selling directly to the consumer we can offer them some bundle pricing in the retail stores and so that they can buy uh, affordability for us is because we are preparing from the waste that is from the leaves and also we are not using any additional glue or chemicals and also working on the economies of scales due to b2 to be clients more probably so because of that it's affordable and next is the acceptability is a major problem because people doesn't believe the claims of a brand as we see the arika leaves it uh it has a major potential this utensils uh because of the key benefit it has even after the recycling it gets converted to manure so we can get for various certifications such as iso certification health and safety testing then aerobic plate count they're free from the fungi or the uh, microorganisms then phytosanitation that it's good to use for us and uh, next is the biodegradability and the compostability testing that is how it can as within seven to eight days it gets composed then the awareness is a major part when we have to create a difference in a society so we would be going with the influencer marketing so uh, we would be using influencers such as environment list or the today's young millennials influencers uh, for promoting our products on the youtube and the instagram and apart from that the community building community building we believe right Dynamic. from the yeah yeah, uh, yeah. 
So we're running out of time. With, uh, so I'll can you wrap it up? Yeah, yeah, I'll do quickly. So community building yeah. is from the entire value chain point of view. We're empowering the self-help groups to the maintaining uh, relations with the industry key stakeholders. And also after the distribution, people would be putting their testimonials. And we have seen Arika Leaf products the people have been using also for the painting and all those so they can share their work. So word of mouth of marketing uh, is a, would happen for us uh, because we are working towards a good cause. Then free trials, we would be going with the initially. Then social media marketing or the targeted ads for the people who usually search about eco-friendly products. Next is the media coverage is very important for any brand. So there are various summits that happen. That is national CSR summit and conferences on sustainable lifestyle and institutes for eco-reformation and many more. Next slide, please. So how long it until it's gone? Aluminium can 200 years ago, cigarette but 10 years ago, plastic wrapper five years ago, plastic bottle 100 to 1000 years. So why not our products which get decomposed within seven to 10 days? Next slide. So buy now, save the nature, preserve the culture and order at ecocult.com. Thank you so much. Uh, Janvi, good presentation, great uh, display of confidence, appreciated. Uh, so you're talking about being eco-friendly, right? I get it. So this is how any of these products would generally be positioned like. Uh, yes. You're also saying no to plastic, appreciated. So plastic is called as a wonder material, right? It's a wonder in invention. So if you reuse your plastic, how are you even, you know, spoiling the uh, environment? Uh, right? As I showed so, the, like, yes. I, I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. Sorry. Okay, so, sorry. But, uh, so the plastic companies, uh, you know, the plastic utensil companies can come up with some strategy and can say reuse plastic, reuse it for so many, so many years. We will give you 25% off on your next purchase. Right. I'm just giving you a, a, a scenario. Right? There can be a possibility like this. For example, there's a company called as the Whole Truth. Right? Have you heard of this company? It uh, produces energy bars and cereals. So it's um. basically a deep company. A deep, uh, so if you consume their cereals and uh, energy bars and send them the wrappers back, back you get a 25% off on the next purchase. Right? So a plastic company, a competitor of your brand can do something like that and can decimate you, right? So how would your counter be in sir, such a scenario? Would, yeah, sir, we would say the world has become very dynamic and fast moving. It's been years since we were kids. We used to give some lace packets in return and we used to get something. Even the Coca-Cola has been trying to recycle, uh, to switch to something recyclable, but then it's again a expensive process for them and they they are not being able to do so. Even the same happened with the McDonald's. They came up with some straw. They actually changed the straw. So it's difficult to implement because even if uh, people don't send it back and apart from that, it's very unorganized. Nobody thinks, okay, nobody thinks the time that they will go and they will get this because we see the things are easily available to us today. And uh, as I shown in the figures, only the 21% is being recycled. Even the same, the Germany is the emerging market I spoke about. Even after the pack, uh, law of packaging law being passed there, like uh, the changes aren't that big so that even it is one of the, uh, they're importing a lot of eco-friendly products. So I think, so our product is one of the good because it's a plastic, it cannot be like, uh, we have spoken it's about decomposing and also it can be like microwave and refrigerated. So people also have that tendency, you know, when it comes to plastic, even if they're recycling, uh, that this plastic is not much uh, uh, eco-friendly or something that stigma is associated. Also, even today, also, if we make uh, like take this plastic uh, utensils into the microwave or something, some people, most of the people, they have hesitation about it. Okay, so when it uh, comes to yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, Janvi, Janvi. Yeah. So um, talking about the product, um, the leaf utensils, right? That you are talking about. So yes, uh, there are two varieties, as we know. One is a little cheaper one, right? But they are not steady. They are not. Uh, they will soak in water, so you can't use it. The second one, the one that you showed, 
the um, biodegradable one uh, with uh, the com compartments it's coming coming in a frame like a tray frame right which have five, four to five compartments which is good quality but uh, do you know what is the price of it uh, yes ma'am i studied about the uh, if this type of material it's usually mm -hmm. from 1 to 5 rupees uh, is the range they are offering on the websites if i have checked and i feel i i should go with the competitive pricing as of now at this point of time when i that is from the 1 rupees uh, starting from the 1 rupees to that range uh, no uh, no no janavi because if you just go check on amazon just check, check on go big basket because i myself have bought it a packet of plate uh, where you can eat your food like lunch okay 25 pieces will be there and it costs around 400 450 sometimes 500 that's the cost of the packet right so it uh, closely 15 to 20 rupees per piece so who is your target audience that's very important because uh, if not plastic then why not steel stainless steel is the best option um which you can Uh, yes, mm. so a uh, why this 50 every day spending uh, around 18 rupees per head two times or three times in a day for a middle class uh, uh, indian family don't you think it's too expensive uh ma'am i have measured my uh, target market mostly is b2b well after if i'm getting some success into the b2b and economies of scale if i have worked upon so that i can switch to the to the consumer directly as i mentioned the chains which are one of the leading partners and they they can afford that product and also when it comes to amazon they uh, we would say it's a kind of an online retailer only where it's also taking some margin so if we are into right. b2b we can have economies of scale and uh, also we can like i mentioned there are various target markets into b2b itself it's a huge market ranging from the hotels to the qsrs and the online delivery partners okay uh, so suppose you have a great uh, consumer base who who are continuously buying this biotech they are well aware they are thinking about the environment and uh, using these kind of products so what are the five strategies you will adopt to retain your customers so uh, most important to retain the customers today is their loyalty and the community building after they are using our products through that community they will be attached to us and also we would be sharing more of our social work they will feel they are not just buying something they are contributing towards the local communities towards the environment and also i think we would so, go for the bundle don't pricing think, don't you think your competitor can also do what we are doing this easy replicability of what we are doing so the social work and all that you talking it's a I service it's, it's it can be easily replicable right Uh, yes but community building and sharing knowledge would be again our key point and also we that, think that can also be done that can also be done that can also be done pricing we could go for for our products uh, like uh, as we have various That's categories in table where bundle pricing can also be done so where also, is your differentiation i think we uh, we are differentiator when it comes to our processes so because processes cannot be imitated easily i feel so and yeah. also yeah. so what is the process my next logical question would be what is the process that can actually differentiate you as i told we are working on zero waste we are taken only the fallen leaves and after that soaking pressing and even the heat technology we are using it's actually making it sturdy and use it in microwave and apart from that uh, also okay. we if janavi one minute uh, you can use uh, uh, ballistic technology also but how would that consumer how would a consumer you know find it uh, you know worthy enough to consume because at the end of the day he needs a product differentiation in terms of its features or a price differentiation okay so here your product is basically very generic it's highly commoditized right yes sir right so then you'll have to pay, play on price you know if you're playing on price right yes sir. you're getting what i'm trying to say if you're if you're playing on price your competitor who has deeper pockets than you can easily bulldoze you right 
yes right right so then you have to do something else right with your marketing and with your product what would that be so as we if we look at the market right now they're just offering plates and the spoons and some are very few might be offering the bowls also as i mentioned i came up with the boxes for the biryani i came up with the boxes that can be taken away uh, like for the parcels at home also uh, with the condiments itself and also it can liquid could, could be accommodated in that so we we would be keeping it as per the trends we have to be innovative when it comes to how does our product looks so from the starting itself if i have come up with this specific designs they would be expecting more from me into the future so after taking more recommendation what mark what my customers are actually liking about so we would be switching and also whenever some festivals are coming something like that so we'll try to incorporate those changes into our designs okay uh, yeah so janvi do you have any other questions for us I would like if you can give me some suggestions that I can incorporate into my idea. I really, you have done a great job. I mean, uh, it's it's a very typical product, but you've still uh, justified your attempt, right? Well played. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Yeah, thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. All the best, Janvi. Yeah, thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Janvi. Having shaker. Shaker. Achman Shaker. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Good morning. Hi. Audible. Shaker. Yes, sir. Achman Shaker. My audible. All right. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, good afternoon to sir, to ma'am, and everyone else who's present in the meeting. My name is Achman Shaker. I'm a final year law student here at Nalsar University of Law. Uh, this actually is my first marketing event, and I'm very excited to be joining you guys. And presenting my ideas to you. So, if I may have the you permission, you started off on a great note, Shaker. We congratulate you on that. You started mm -hmm. off on a great note. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, if I may share my presentation now, if that's fine. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So I just want to tell all of you that we are sleeping on a great business opportunity. And my presentation today is a wake up call. And so it's only fitting that I'm uh, here presenting an alarm clock, which symbolizes waking up to this great new opportunity. And so if I may be allowed, I'll start with my presentation now. Uh, just a background to this. Not only do I cover what my marketing strategy and target audience would be for this product in this uh, uh, through this presentation, I'll also be generally communicating the idea that we seek to communicate to the wider audience once we go to the market with this product. So uh, this is the wake up clock to uh, uh, to avoid sleeping on the great opportunity that are alarm clocks. Uh, if I may be allowed to share this video, which I feel perfectly cat uh, captures why alarm clocks have become so important and what or uh, doom scrolling really uh, what the dangers of doom scrolling are today so yes hey hey do it do it you want me to do it do it do the thing you got it five new emails from your boss climate change a famous person said something racist the new laws being passed to stop women from breathing too much 45 people saw your instagram story jerry seinfeld is canceled there's a new kind of covid probably hey oh yeah what's up baby boy do you you think it's healthy for me to start every single day like this yes but like in terms of you know, like mental health yes Okay, then let's keep going. A volcano erupted. Ben Shapiro said something. Now everyone's yelling. Okay, I'm gonna go make some coffee now, all right? I'm gonna need you to come with me and keep going all day. Yeah. Well, this must be funny, but it's also the reality for most 20 year olds today. We start our days with our phone and we usually end up scrolling on that phone for a prolonged period of time. This is not the best way to start your morning because not only a it hampers your productivity it eats into the me time that you could have had first thing in the morning my parents always used to tell me that you are at your best when you wake up in the morning 
you think your best when you wake up in the morning and i think that precious time is lost when we do scroll on our phone for hours on end and this ultimately impacts our productivity and our quality of life and that's that's something which fits into the larger picture of how digitally connected we are in today's hyper fast and hyper connected world our smartphones have not only just taken up our waking hours but have also taken over our sleep so it might feel as if it's harmless to keep your phone as an alarm clock and within the arms reach but several medical studies have shown that there are immense harmful effects of using your alarm clock on your in your bedroom and uh, <clears throat> uh interacting with your phone right before you go to sleep or right after you wake up and that's why we are bringing an old school alarm clock back to the market to really capture it and to ensure that the health oriented people have an effective alternative to wake up early in the morning it is also uh, it also goes without saying that there are several harmful effects a uh, harmful effects of using a phone uh, in the night when it's dark which include uh, emfs that the phones emit blue lights and the consequent uh, uh, stress that these phones that the use of these phones and its bright lights lead us to and so my solution for all of this is going old school it's the simple elegant and analog alarm clock it's a no frills alarm clock with nothing digital it's just something that our grandparents also used to do and this is something that i seek to bring back to the market and ensure that the younger generation especially people between the ages of 15 to 35 start using why this particular i why i've targeted this particular uh, demographic is because these people generally are the ones who are most afflicted with the smartphone addiction that we see among our generation today and there is something which is having a big impact on their health whereas on the other hand using alarm clocks can give a lot of health benefits to the individuals that we are targeting it can obviously uh, lead to an increased production of melatonin which is the hormone of sleep which is very required to have a peaceful and stress free sleep at every night and there is something that our phones and bright lights strip ourselves off it also as a corollary of better production of melatonin it also uh, it also uh, betters our circadian rhythm which helps us uh, be in sync and be more productive throughout the day through uh, <clears throat> Uh, by really uh, reorienting ourselves back to how we supposed to be, back to how we supposed to be, and back to our most efficient and most productive selves. And obviously, the reduced exposure to electromagnetic fields, which these gadgets and Wi-Fi, uh, Wi-Fi gadgets produce, is obviously a very good health advantage that accrues from the use of an alarm clock. and by keeping your smartphone away from you when you go to sleep but there is also psychosocial benefits or should i say familial benefits so let's say it's a friday evening and you're just about to go to bed when you're about to go to bed what do you what is more important to you knowing what is happening in the ashneer grover case or knowing what your children's plans are for the weekend i think i i can say it for me and for my parents i think it will be more important for us to really talk between among ourselves and figure out where all of us are and by taking out the phone out of the bedroom where, where the most intimate and the most uh, familial moments can be shared between people we are essentially restoring the family time that has been effectively stripped away from us by our smartphones and it's not just before we go to bed even when we wake up it's it's as if if we all if we have the option of scrolling on our uh, scrolling on our phones instead of talking to our partners or our siblings we'll obviously going to do that because there is something that has just become very common and very cool and by taking the smartphones out of the bedroom and putting the alarm clock back in that is something that we're trying to achieve to do 
Yes, and it obviously looks beautiful. The beauty of an alarm clock cannot be parallel, cannot be compared with the bland black screen of a smartphone or any other gadget for that matter. And so it also has an inherent aesthetic value, which can go well with with the uh, artistic and with the uh, design oriented generation of today. And so, yes, my target audience accordingly is anyone who wants to wake up early, but also lead a healthy lifestyle and combat the smartphone addiction. So the people primary audience that I've tried to identify are students, sports persons, professionals, and even parents. I think by reaching out to these audience, we can really push home our target, a push home our objective and what we seek to do to them by taking out the smartphone away from your bedroom and putting the alarm clock back in. And so how do I plan on reaching to these target audience? I only have one uh, marketing strategy and that is direct to consumer by, by partnering up with wellness influencers who are very famous on social media websites such as YouTube, TikTok and Instagram. These uh, wellness influencers as I've researched have a very big reach. So for example, there's this uh, YouTuber by the name of Alpha M and he enjoys the subscription of around 10 million people and he endorses the Vincero collection of watches. Now this Vincero collection of watches is a virtually unknown brand, but due to the sponsorship and due to the partnership with Alpha M who enjoys a massive subscriber pool of 10 million people, Vincero's uh, revenues are in the millions and they're growing by many fold every year. So I think it's a very sound strategy to go ahead with the wellness influencers. Also given the fact that these wellness influencers are, their influence is very strong among the target audience that we're going forward for, which is, uh, uh, 50, uh, which is people between the ages of 15 to 35, as well as parents who want to spend more time with their parents, parents who want to spend more time with their children and probably want their children to stay away from the screens so as to break the cycle, vicious cycle of uh, phone addiction. So yes, these are some of the kind of videos that we may sponsor as, as part of our collaboration with the YouTubers. And um, I, I have looked at some of these videos and what we, what I was ideally thinking of doing was that we partner with such creators and we ask them to, um, ask them to promote not only alarm clocks, but also our specific brand by giving them affiliate links where they can ask their followers to probably buy this clock and use their uh, discount code, which not only gives the followers a little discount, but it also indicates to us who, who, influ which influencer has been the one who has affected our sales the most. And therefore we can accordingly, uh, share our profits or share our dividends with them as, uh, as proportionally. And so that is my broad marketing strategy. It's completely direct to consumer. It's completely online. And, uh, because it's because I, uh, uh, what my my general marketing framework was is the KISS framework, which, uh, stands for keep it simple, stupid. And I think that specializing in one arena can get us the revenue and can get us the traction that we require to ensure that this product hits the market very well and succeeds in the market. So yes, uh, as regards to what I plan to do with this product, my core focus would be to improve functionality while getting rid of excessive bells and whistles. I personally feel that, uh, to increase for functionality, we only need to in uh, include two more things to the classic analog clock. One is the glow powder, which ensures that even if there's night, people can look at what the time is. And the second is multiple snooze buttons because we are a generation which does not wake up just by one snooze button. We often need the alarm to ring after every five, 10 minutes for us to wake up. So these are the two features that I'd like to introduce other features such as customizable alarm tunes and digital displays. I believe just, uh, interfere with our message of going back to the roots and, uh, 
and picking up a traditional analog alarm clock and therefore I would advocate against the use of customizable alarm tunes, digital displays and all the fancy gadgets and um, fancy uh, Shaker, like, can we get to the end? Yes, uh, this is my last slide. So, uh, please excuse the pun, but uh, I would like to end by saying that this is the opportunity and we should get to it right now as soon as possible because the early bird gets the worm. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, uh... Hi, Achman. Um, a lovely uh, presentation. We really enjoyed your presentation and the video that you showed us. So uh, what uh, I understood from your presentation is you, uh, to revive the market for these alarm clocks, which we are not using anymore most of the times. So you try to uh, connect it with the, our tradition, with our culture, right? With all good habits and uh, how to stay away from the mobile phone as much as possible. Uh, so. Uh, I just ask you, you have all told us all the benefits of um, having an alarm clock. So what I want from you is tell us five demerits of using uh, an alarm clock, which we can use otherwise uh, to make the product more effective. So you know what are the benefits, the demerits of using an alarm clock or what are lacking in an alarm clock, and then we can use it again for to make the product more uh, productive or for the marketing of the product. Absolutely. Man. So ma'am, a couple of demerits that I could think of was that uh, to be very fair, an alarm clock in today's smartphone age is an excessive expenditure. It's not a ne necessary expenditure and anyone who has a smartphone can do without, can absolutely live without an alarm clock. It's, it also takes up more space. So in a world where we're trying to declutter or we're trying to shift towards minimalism, buying an extra gadget which we don't really need per se will 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 go against the ethos of uh, minimalism and um, decluttering so to say and uh, okay so i spent one minute one minute so whenever you are telling me uh, the one of the demerit you have to tell me a strategy to overcome that okay. because we, you are promoting a alarm clock right you are saying that it has to be there at, in your home so yes, uh, what would you do yes. okay go ahead so ma'am, uh, coming to the first demerit, which was uh, that it's not a necessary expenditure. I would say that even watches are not necessary expenditure in today's day and age, but they do carry with them a certain appeal, a certain charm. They're good to look at their confidence boosters. And given the health benefits of alarm clocks, I believe that they can be very well used to put in uh, the, uh, and I'm, I think they are not necessary per se, but given the various health benefits that they provide as compared to the smartphones, they are a very effective alternative for something to keep as the alarm in our bedrooms per se. Coming to the decluttering part, ma'am, I think decluttering is important, but given the aesthetic value of alarm clocks, they do not add to the clutter. Instead, they stand out and they increase the beauty of our bedroom space or any space that we keep them in. The third possible demerit that I could think of is that they're too heavy to use. But ma'am, I can also say that they, uh, so we have beds and we have side tables usually. And so on the side tables, what we see are wires, and lamps and uh, phones of all kinds, but they, and none of them are aesthetically appealing or none of them provide us any comfort or joy. Whereas if we keep a sturdy looking alarm clock on it, it gives us this inherent satisfaction, this personal satisfaction that yes, there is something that grounds me. And yes, this is something that I can wind up every night to wake me up in the morning in a very analog sense where you're actually touching the alarm clock and now just touch not just pressing buttons on your screen. So I think that experience in the night can also be a, a, a unique selling point for the alarm clock. Uh, Achman, very, ni very nice presentation. I understand you're from a law background. Uh, putting this kind of effort is really commendable. Appreciate you once again for this kind of effort. So uh, uh, Achman, uh, don't you think using a Pomodoro would just bulldoze your product. Pomodoro is even more simple click, uh, ticking mechanical machine. Don't you think that can just bulldoze your product? 
Uh, sir, uh, I... Because your positioning has been uh, digital detox, uh, detox, right? So don't you think a mm -hmm. simple Pomodoro can uh, put you out of the market? Uh, sir, I don't think so because I believe in the power of word of mouth and I believe in the power of the kind of influence that wellness influencers have. As I was mentioning to you before, see, uh, uh, I don't carry a watch around with me. I don't find any functionality for a watch personally, but I also understand that there are consumers who are willing to buy those kind of stuff. And so, sir, a watch market is very saturated, but even in that market, a relatively newbie, which has no institutional backing, which does not have a lot of capital investment behind it, which is, which goes by the name of Vincero watch collection was able to partner up with one wellness influencer and was able to achieve millions in revenue and millions in profit in less than two, three years. And that's been growing many folds ever since. So I think, sir, that with the power of word of mouth publicity and the classic benefits that an alarm clock provides, we can combat the challenges of having several competitors. Okay. So your competitor can also come up with a very good word of mouth strategy, right? Absolutely. So then, then again, you'll be put, you'll be back to square one. Uh, uh, sir. So, yes. Yes. Yeah. So then how would you combat that? So the, basically it's all a very competitive dynamic scenario. You play a chess move, your competitor plays another one, right? So, and if he comes with a good financial muzzle, right? He can, he can develop brand communities like you have for Royal Enfield or Harley Davidson. So these communities will do the talking for you. All right. So if so, building these communities requires a lot of financial muscle. Okay. If you're not such a big organization and if your competitor is a very big organization, he can build these communities and he can put you out of the market. Absolutely. So how would, yeah. So you acknowledge this uh, loophole. Uh, sir, I would like to counter, I think the market is big enough for several market players as regards to the building of a community. What my main focus is, I'm, I'm not trying to go both to the retail side of the market and to the online side of the market. I'm just focusing on the online side of the market, the e-commerce side of the market, where I partner up with digital influencers and wellness influencers and give them part of my profits. So as to ensure that their interests in pushing the, my brand forward and our alarm clocks forward are aligned with our interests. And so, sir, I think that we might also get the first movers advantage in that sense that we're able to create a good community. And I, sir, I believe, sir, that alarm clock for one person is a one-time purchase. And that is something that if we get the consumer right in the beginning, they're not going to be like that. This alarm clock has 10 more features and you're going to buy that. They're just going to be like, we're satisfied with this alarm clock. It works perfectly well. And therefore we're going to stick with it. So Shaker, another loophole is if you, if the market is too big and it can have a lot of players. So the chances of you getting the extra edge, right? I mean, the profits are also very limited there. If you have too many players, uh, so you would like to, you would like to take that gamble there then because there's hardly any differentiation in whatever you told me. Absolutely. sir. Yes. I think it's, right. a, okay. it's a good play. Yeah. Thank you, Shekhar. It was a pleasure talking to you. I appreciate you once again because you're from a law background and you still, uh, you are still a formidable contender. Very, very, very good effort. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, thank you, Shekhar. So next we'll be having Nitesh Chauhan. Just need some water. Let me just stretch and come back. Hello everyone. Hello. Uh, good afternoon. Am I audible and visible? Uh, yes, yes. I think you guys can. I'll wait for a couple minutes. That's completely okay. Yeah. Uh, so, shall we take time as yeah. we'll, we'll finish it. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll finish our PPT. Yeah. And then we'll and then. take a break. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, to begin, before beginning my PPT, I'm 
very nervous before I started because the presentation before me have been really, really great. But let me try and do some justice to it. Yes, I hope my screen is visible. I'm visible and audible. Everything is checked. Yeah, all fine. All fine. OK, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Nitesh Chahan, and I'm a second year statistics student at Ramjas College, University of Delhi. And today I'm going to present a revival strategy of keypad phone. Yes, the first mobile phone that any of us has ever purchased except those born five years ago, of course. I'm sure you all still remember Nokia 3310, the first phone that we took in our hands, and we all have an emotional connect with them. But keypad phones have become obsolete now. With Samsung, Apple, and all these big players focusing on big display smartphone, the market for keypad phone is shrinking rapidly. The latest smartphones are, of course, beautiful and sleek, and they're perfect for this world. Keypad phones look inelegant in this materialistic world. And to back up my claims, I have the revenue of smartphone market that has been growing rapidly year over year. So you ask, why exactly keypad phone? What does it bring to the table? And whom am I going to sell it to? Because now even a chaiwala has a smartphone and her grandparents are comfortable touching their fingers over a touch screen. Exactly. Our target audience is a highly distracted Gen Z and millennials who wants to be connected to the world but still need a break. The average smartphone owners unlock their phone 150 times a day. 66% of the world's population show the sign of nomophobia, that is the fear of losing their phone. And I'm sure out of all of us, at least 90 to 100% people have felt that fear. Use a smartphone for longer interval of time also alter the brain chemistry. So it is safe to say that the smartphone created for our convenience, for our betterment, for utility has become a problem. And the problem is very great because addiction is no joke. The world is addicted to smartphone, even our grandparents. We all have seen our parents being rapidly using Facebook every day for hours on end. And that problem is of no end. Therefore, nostalgia alone cannot do the trick. But not to forget that keypad phones do have a use case, which we all have missed up till now. A smartphone is not needed everywhere. And that is the answer to the problem. We need a keypad phone to maintain a peace of mind and still stay connected to the world, which is perfect for people like me and you who are glued to their phone for five to six hours a day. If you're going out on a walk, you, of course, do not need your smartphone. If you're sitting on a dining table, eating, waiting for a phone call, you do not need your smartphone, do you? It allows us to connect better to our families and partners and relatives. It allows us to play better with our friends without being on our phone and worrying what's happening with the world. Keypad phones are awesome and don't laugh on it. We are not trying to sell a product here, but a solution to a very dangerous problem that almost all of us struggle with. We are at a stage where there are far too many distractions that a human being can be tempted with, and it is time. It is time for us to move towards simplicity and give back the chance to the keypad phone that were working for us. Our strategy is not addition the feature to the keypad phone, but elimination of all the features which are not necessary. Keypad phones need to be an addition to our lifestyle, and we look to position them as an alternative to achieve success and mental peace in this fast moving world. Additionally, it also allows us to feel the texture after all and not poke our fingers at a touch screen that I personally hate a lot, but have no option. It is important to understand how big a market is before we enter into it. The global phone market is 378 billion currently, growing at a CAGR of 6.5%. That means it is expected to reach somewhere around 678 billion by 2026. Of course, we can never capture the entire market, and that is not a strategy too. As I mentioned, our target audience is the highly distracted Gen Z and millennial who wants to achieve their peace of mind after all. Therefore, 20% of the phone market caters to our target audience. 
taking into account all the variables and our strategies, in first year itself, we would be able to cater to a market worth $3.7 million. And if everything goes right from our messaging to branding and packaging, we would be able to capture $60 million of market by 2026. Competitive analysis. It's simple. There are two things that we offer. That is simplicity, a distraction-free lifestyle, and finally the touch of keypad that we all have been missing for. There are phone brands that provide you simplicity and touch screen. There are phone brands that provide you with distraction and touch screen in forms of advertisement that are constantly on your home screen. And there are also phones of Sony that provide you with keypad, but they combine it with touch screen, defeating the purpose of our product. Therefore, it allows us to stand out from the competitor. Talking about the distribution strategy, like mentioned, keypad phone is not a competitor to smartphone, but a solution to the addiction and we look to complement them. For the initial couple of months, we also look to gift one along with a smartphone so as to let our users try it for a couple of days and see the change themselves. Direct to consumer. We are trying to change a behavior here and we need to explain the benefits of the product to our customers directly. And therefore, direct to consumer allows us that. If you go to a shop and you see a feature phone sitting there, you're never going to buy it and your chances to buy it are slim to zero, at least. Also, we look to have online promotion in form of YouTube marketing and Instagram ads to allow us to reach our customers better and to break their habit of this, of addiction to smartphone. It is a problem as serious as it can get and it is time we deal with it. It is time we deal with it in a way that we are not dependent on a smartphone every moment and not constantly feeling the fear of missing out. We are able to go out without that fear of missing out and live our life better because we know if there is an emergency, we'll get a call on our keypad phones. So yes, please simplify your daily routine with a keypad phone. I, with this, I end my presentation. Thank you. Uh, well presented, well researched, uh, Nitish. Congratulations on that. <laughs> Nitish, Thank I was so wondering, where is your segmentation, targeting, and positioning slide? So yes, I think I mentioned it, the target audience that we are uh, hoping for is Gen Z and millennials mostly, because uh, we could not segment that further because all of them are struggling with the problem of phone addiction, not going to oh. children or to uh, old age people because this problem is not all right okay so uh, you, you're getting to that particular segment right okay yes. so uh, fine why did you not think about a psychographic segmentation concept where you can target lifestyles okay by lifestyles i specifically mm. mean so there's an increasing trend of minimalist lifestyle of late right mm. People are consuming less than what they used to consume, right? So then targeting the addicts, all right? Why, why don't you target this increasing segment of minimalists who would really like your product? Because it will not have any of these smartphone applications, mm -hmm. which will stop them from purchasing something more, OK? Because they're minimalists, they wouldn't want to engage in uh, in any other uh, bank transactions, right? Yeah. Right? Uh, and you're also, you know, cutting them, uh, you know, to what they really want, right? Why did you not look at that particular segment? So yes, uh, that makes a lot of sense. And I missed it out completely while thinking of it. But uh, while I was designing this presentation, I was thinking of what problem statement we are trying to solve for minimalist. So, you agree that minimalist is a sizable audience, right? Yes, yes, yes. Right? Yes, yes. yes. there are I, many I, people I, who have only two t-shirts, only one phone for like several years. Uh, so that kind of people, they have, uh, they have like one uh, tube light at home, one fan at home, of like which is three bedroom house or a four bedroom house and yes. the rest is all you know, thriving on solar energy or something like that. You know that kind of people, Yes, right? yes, yes. I know that kind of people. Of course, I do. So uh, the only problem with while I was researching about this was that if I go and target minimalistic people, it becomes difficult for me to sell them the keypad phone. Because even though they are minimalistic, they still prefer a smartphone with themselves. Because they would Why? still want to have a couple of features that smartphone accompany. 
So I thought I could solve a bigger problem, which is the addiction to smartphone. But yes, minimalistic, of course, makes sense. And if I have to read a render presentation, I would add that as a target audience. All right. I'm just so telling it's you my thought about, process. Yes, uh, I this. Um, well done. We really enjoyed your presentation. So it's not only about having uh, this addiction, but hmm. nowadays, you know, a simple, like a phone can solve so many problems for us. Like we're just holding one thing and then you can do transaction, you can send messages, you can a video call, right? So you can see your uh, family who are not with you here. So you can talk to them uh, every day and uh, Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram, everything, and so many games. So I mm. I can uh, relate to this. I also had a small, very small phone, Nokia phone. So we used to play that snake game uh, in that phone. I don't remember the exact name of it, but that addiction was there. It was there with that one game also. And now in this whole developmental process, we are now completely used to it. So that I can understand. Tell me three important features of today's uh, smartphone, which you want to incorporate in this keypad phone uh, to in, in this whole revival process. You want to revive this thing again. You want to market this thing, uh, keypad phone. But um, if you compare, you'll find so many things, right? Uh, the yes. difference between a smartphone and a, any any three important uh, points, any three important or uh, most important, you can say, uh, features of a smartphone which you want to incorporate in the keypad phone. Yes, yes. So when I was thinking about it, I wanted to eliminate as many features as I could because okay. if I include features that defeats the purpose of it. So of course, calling becomes one feature because we need it for emergency purposes. SMS become the second feature. And after going through two presentation about the importance of alarm clock, I, I it made me think that I should keep alarm clock into the keypad phone because that defeats uh, that actually helps them without having the uh, presence to screen still having an alarm clock. So yes, these three features would be my go to. They are the already the there, right? SMS, SMS calling and uh, alarm clock are already there in your phone, in your keypad phone. What else? Oh, additionally, no, I do not. So, uh, I do not need any three things any that you want to add. You have to add. You have to tell me what three things from the smartphone you want to take it to the keypad phone. Okay, from smartphone to keypad phone. Okay. Okay, that is a difficult question to answer, but um, okay, let me try. I think gaming might be one that I would want to take, but um, I think it already exists. So maybe on a good level that I could take gaming to one because it allows them to, you know, use their free time in a better manner without indulging in a lot of problematic things. That would be one thing. Apart from that, I think. So anything that I can think of, I think alternative already exists. So I was going to say digital banking, but uh, we can also do that over keypad phone using a couple of numbers that is star 99 hash. So that becomes another thing. So uh, at this moment, I cannot think of any three things particularly that I would want from smartphone because I think keypad phone would self sustain themselves and would do the mission that I'm going for. No, no, the question, the rationale for that question is you're basically reviving the product, right? Yes. You're basically reviving the, the keypad, QWERTY phone. keypad phone. So that is yes. why if you want to revive something, then the majority of audience is already in one particular direction. So hmm. of smartphones, you'll have to bring in some element of the smartphone to the this phone so that they are not completely disillusioned, right? That they're not completely out of place, right? For so that some change for that thing. So to bring in that element of continuity. Mm -hmm. So okay. for that, that is the, uh, yeah. yes, so I think uh, uh, games can be one feature. Uh, apart from that, I think uh, I can have WhatsApp in it for the beginning stages so as they can you know move easily and still be okay because most people do not use sms's and they are more comfortable on whatsapp that can be another thing to move with um, apart from this i think uh, digital banking can be another process that i could have some sort of upi integration if that would make sense because then it will also allow me to go out shop without my smartphone defeating the entire purpose of it so it might make more sense so yes three answers how about a music app how about a music app music music app Hmm. <laughs> I think music already exists with keypad phones, so that's why I eliminated it. But, but uh, yeah. Yeah. 
रेडियो में भी रेडियो रेडियो एग्जिस्ट पर म्यूजिक ऐप एग्जिस्ट आई डोंट नो ओके नितेश सो इफ यू गेट अ चांस टू प्रिपेयर एफएक्यू फॉर दिस प्रोडक्ट ठीक है सो व्हाट आर जस्ट गिव मी थ्री टू फोर क्वेश्चंस कॉमनली आस्क्ड क्वेश्चंस बाय द कस्टमर्स अबाउट दिस प्रोडक्ट की पैड फोन Hmm. Okay. First question that I can think of is, does it have social media? The second question would be, can I store my photos and click them? And the third question would be, can I call all my friends? Can I call all my friends? Group calling. That's what you are talking about. Yes. 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 so uh, one one of the question was can i store photos right yes so you need a good camera for that camera should be yes. there in a phone huh? i think the the answer of the fq would be no because uh, i would <laughs> want them to stay connected to the nature more and not you know get indulged in photography again have the pleasure of the moment so the answer would be no okay. all right very well done uh, and I also appreciate you for being open for suggestions, right? <laughs> really appreciate you for that. You oh, go yes, along with well. absolutely. If if yeah. I have to design the marketing presentation again, of course, minimalistic is going in there. How can I forget such a big segmentation? And that's so easy to approach as well. It will be harder for me to approach yeah. the addicts. So and make them all change these product. addictions are habit forming, right? So mm -hmm. for you to get rid of habit is very difficult. Rather, yes. target people who are easily accessible. Yes. That's. The way I I would want to go. Yes, it exactly. is. Exactly. That's job. just job. too big of a market, too easy to capture, and I missed it. I understand that. No problem. Well done. Thank you so much, Nitesh. All the Thank best. You so All the best. Thank you so much. It was really nice talking to you. Thank you. Hello, guys. Uh, so we're going to have a very small break of ten minutes. So let us continue the rest uh, at one ten. So thank you. Hi, good afternoon. Alia. Yeah, hello. Just give me a second. Hi. There's a lot of disturbance. Is it? Uh, yeah, better now. Yeah, better now. There was um, a lot of disturbance. Now it is better. Is my voice audible? Yeah, your word audible and visible also. So, please start. So, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Alia Firdaus Usmani, and I'm a management student from Symbiosis Institute of Management Studies, Pune. And the topic that I have selected for my pitch is the landline. So, why have I chosen the landline? Because I've chosen landline because Uh, the fact that landline may seem like a thing of the past, and it doesn't mean that one shouldn't have it in our homes. Having a landline can be crucial in an emergency or when uh, something unexpected may happen. I believe that landline has a scope uh, to be uh, revived because since the pandemic, people have shifted from texting to hearing voices of each other, having conversations over the calls. So I think uh, the product uh, landline has a. Uh, possibility of revival so the uh, brand that i have taken to revive my uh, the landline is line and it uh, it goes by a cord that connects loved ones so these are few product specifications that uh, a normal landline will have like it will have a connecting jack a uh, minimum of 2 meters and it will have a desk and wall mounting talking about my target market so it is usually the old people who are not very familiar with using smartphones it's the students who want uh, who want uh, to get rid of the smartphone for a few uh, for and get rid of distractions in households landlines are important especially in duplex houses for office use and other businesses also uh, use a landline phone so i conducted a market survey uh, for around 100 people of my college uh mostly and they i asked them uh that have they ever used landline or do they have uh used a cell phone 
or do ha- do they have linked a landline uh do they uh, miss using a landline ever so uh why a landline is important and i have done a swot analysis here and there is also a uh, immense potential of landline to co- make a comeback in india because we have 138 million elderly persons and even rural areas and remote area people they have to uh they do not have accessibility of smartphones and there's immense market opportunity for uh, landline to make a comeback because it's convenient because uh and you know it it will never go out of network it's cheaper because you do not uh, just how we put monthly packs in our uh, mobile phones and inter- for internet services we not we need not do the same and if there are even power cuts so we 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 do not have to worry that uh, the landline will get disconnected so my marketing strategy here is brand re- uh, reinforcement and revitalization so first thing that i would like to do is analyze the price point so uh, we i have to uh, f- to make uh, for the revival of uh, my product i have to make it uh, in affordable margins and uh give away free installation facilities also focusing on customer services because uh customer service is extremely vital for the success of any brand and the customers would define it's worthy to come back or to um, get a landline device or not today and it's a great way to deal with the the other competing brands that would um direct our efforts towards our customers so uh these are a few strategies that i have thought of so for offline marketing the uh i would like to set up an event market and an event market is a drive to uh facilitate sales so customers when they look at the landline they will just go back to the nostalgia and the feel how it was how they used to have conversations because in india old habits die hard and for la- uh landline telephone it's a symbol of old culture of scarcity and elitism in india and it uh it is this uh, it is something that uh, surely facilitated communication in india and p- i think people will remain loyal to it and then we can also set up ar screen mirrors and uh, it will uh, display videos like a look into the past how we used to have conversations before texting before whatsapp and all and even direct mail so before uh, long ago we used to get telephone uh, bills in mail so i think advertising through this channel would be great uh coming to online uh, though it's a old technology uh, landline devices i would market it on social media platforms re- using reels the art of story telling and also collaborate with uh, influencers youtubers and uh, these are few names that i have thought about it and we could organize fun uh, contests on social media for user engagement and um, something that they would uh, uh, connect with the device uh that's all then these are few hashtags that i have thought about a go, uh, like they can go ad free because if you are on a landline you do not uh, you're not bothered by uh, ads and spams and you have you live a basic life like you do not need customization of fancy wallpapers or ringtones and themes and you you can disconnect or take a detox from the screen and the new uh, the new product that i would bring it, it would be like a souvenir or will have a aesthetic appeal something they might not use every day a uh, landline phone definitely in today's world because it cannot replace the smartphone definitely but they can it's something uh, like an attractive piece that they can put it and their home and use it very occasionally or rarely and they can also tie up with other brands so for example when they are uh, are um, coordinating with builders and who are making uh, construction constructing homes so they can set up it in advance and uh, for children i have thought that there could be a gamification where they can also communicate and take a break from uh, from the normal uh, mobile phone so i think um, using a telephone as a toy uh, version would also be uh, would also help kids to uh connect with it who have not used it ever and my future action plan would be a smart landline so uh, just like 
how it is integrated with Google Home or Alexa. Uh, this is a similar model that I've thought about. Uh, I think that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Alia. Thank well you. done with the presentation. Uh, so I have a couple of questions. Could you please go to your uh, insight slide? You said that you did some study. I want to understand your uh, results. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, like, what was the key insight of this particular uh, study that you have done? I really did not could, I could not follow that. Yeah. Yeah. So these are three age groups here. Uh, the first one is uh, below twenty. Uh, the lighter shade is from twenty-five to fifty years old, and then another one is from fifty to uh, above. So, uh, what are the people that want? Uh, like, the first is like how 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 have they used? How frequently have they used the landline phone? Then the second one is, sorry, it's not responding. Yeah. Then the second one is uh, like, do they have a cell uh, cell phone currently? And would they like? Uh, how was their experience using a landline? And would they like uh, it to have a comeback? So it was just like. Uh, Few people connected with it, especially the uh, target market of 25 to 50. So they were like uh, more in more volume that uh, they were like more open to this idea of getting a landline phone, having it a comeback. I'm sorry, I couldn't follow the significance of the study. Like, what did you gain out of the study? I didn't understand that. Uh, so I was like, I wanted to understand exactly what is the population who wanted, uh, who are more eager for having this landline phone. Like, All right. So yeah. purchase intention was yeah. your objective. So how many of the hundred, uh, how many were interested in purchasing? Uh, like not exactly purchasing, but uh, I was like just uh, uh, asking that how, how was their experience using a landline previously? Okay. okay. So what did you do with the this insight? Uh, I have uh, so with this insight, I have uh, understood that it's just the twenty-five to fifty year of population who, uh, when they were younger, they used a landline phone every day. So uh, it is that I just, I want to focus more on that segment. Uh, are they keen to use it one more time? So you said whoever is 20, in between 25 to 50 nowadays, they used it before. So uh, what is their uh, view today? So are they keen to use the same no. product again? Today, they wouldn't use it like regularly, but uh, it, it won't be a harm to keep it at home and just use it rarely. OK, so uh, talking about, uh, Alia, talking about the need of the customer, what are the five needs of the customer? So the first need is that it is reliable. It is simple to use then um, it is like a little cost effective you need in case of any emergencies you can use it and also also when you uh, have like Yeah. We lost you uh, in between. Could you please repeat the answer? Alia, our team will reach out to you 
uh, we'll come back later. All right, can we move to the next participant? Uh, Soumya? Soumya, you will be, you'll be given the presenter right now, so you can. Yes, actually I have sent your presentation. Can you present on behalf of me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we are presenting, so it's your okay, turn. Okay, okay. Uh, a very good evening to all jury present here. I am Swami Surana, pursuing BBA, first year from Maharaja Agarsen. It's very delighted to showcase the presentation in front of you all. So, my topic is library. Next slide, please. So what are my presentation outline? Topics to cover. Why the product has been selected. Target audience, marketing objective, marketing strategy. Why is it obsolete now and how would revive it? Next slide, please. So the main question is why the product has been selected. So I considered myself as a bibliophile and I love to enjoy reading as much. As gateway to knowledge and culture, library, pay, library plays a fundamental role in society. The resources and services they offer create opportunities for learning, support literacy and education and help shape the new ideas and perspective that are central and innovative society. There are tremendous uh, benefits of library which are overshadowed with passage of time I need to some need to put some light on. With this objective keeping in mind, I, I choose this topic to widen the path of my knowledge. Next slide, please. So what's my target audience? Uh, preferably my target audience are adults, as adults are widest target group. The available service of adult use of library show three main trends: more women than men more people with a higher education than people with a lower education use the library and many children visit the libraries accompanied by adults senior citizens senior citizens are one of the large group of users uh, of the traditional library offer they borrow books and read newspaper but an increasing number have also used the library's continual offers of help with learning how to send emails use their smartphones, send text messages, and now also how to use tablets onto which they are downloaded ebooks. So uh, uh, preferably senior citizens uh, can avail offers, uh, can avail a uh, type of networking and uh, they are like, they are like kind of, uh, as they are conservative and uh, they like to uh, move they have been they have been not normalized to digital form so i think the traditional library would be a better source for them the library role as a leading as a learning center therefore important important to its targets group which also grave a great extent use the places that provide citizen services for communication with public authorities next slide please So what are my marketing objectives? The library's key marketing objective includes strategical plan are to increase visitor numbers, increase awareness of library and its purpose, role as an education, cultural institution of net, uh, national and international significance, increase public awareness of services, events and activities and achieve greater service usage, create a positive public image, attract new audience, audiences, so all my marketing objectives are are uh, so all my marketing objectives are being fulfilled by my marketing strategies so could you please do next slide uh, so my marketing tactics uh, tactics are based on four p's product the library has wide range of different products and services which in itself present challenges they include its exclusive collection collections which contain valuable and unique material 
internal and external exhibitors, targeted events for family, educational resources for schools, colleges, and universities. In addition, there are products that help library generate income, such as the shop, cafe, corporate hire facilities for public and private events, includes wedding and uh, digitalization services and guided tours. The role of marketing is to turn these separate products and services into benefits by addressing such questions as what opportunities do our product and services provide and for whom. Next slide. So the next piece stands for place. The factor that the library promotes with regards to its geographical location are stunning peaceful location overlooking, iconic building with first class visitor facilities, close partnership with a world class university on its doorstep. Next is price. Enter to the library is free. However, because of our relatively remote physical location, the actual cost of access may be quite high. Local delivery hubs are therefore part of marketing techniques. To reduce any perceived cost of access for the users, goods and services such as the shop, cafe and digitalization services are chargeable and any profit gener uh, generated is reinvested in the library income stream. So my main aim is like doing a fusion of libraries and public uh, public events like there is a one section of cafe and in second section we can uh, we can plan a library in it so that there would be uh, so so that they won't be a uh, like a library is free uh, we enter library in free but if we uh, if we add on these services this would generate some income next slide So what are the promotion skills? Uh, what are the promotion techniques which can be inhibited in our library? Advertising, paid advertisements online in newspapers, magazines, and radio, print banners, posters, leaflets, etc., and arranging discussions. Uh, leaflets are sent to places such as libraries, tourist information offices, cafes, and other places likely to be visited by the campaign target audience. Direct mail, sending leaflets to or other print to name individual using an in-house database. E-newsletters, website features and social media campaigns as a part of content strategy to deliver content which is high quality, timely and relevant to the audience. Content will be engaging, worth sharing and easy to access. Public relation, in addition to traditional press conference. One second. Yeah, so can you uh, wrap it up fast? Because okay. we are already only 10 minutes each year. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, so PR increasingly overlaps with social media and vice versa. Uh, next slide. Why is it obsolete now and how would you revive it? So library is currently obsolete. And so the so to revive it, branding is very important part of marketing process of examining what are what the library does what the library stands for what the library mean to different people this enable us to establish and communicate communicate clear goals both internally and externally and to develop an emotional connection with our audience with build engagement the library brand should evoke a feeling and understanding of what the library stands for and the value it promotes and should be and should be manifest in everything that the visitor experience at the library and in its online presence. The library brand will underpin everything which the library does and provide a clear and consistent message to promote the library and its service to our audience. Next slide. Uh, social media management. Uh, social media management and blogs and other... Samya. We are running out of time, Samya. Yeah, yeah. You, uh, I'm afraid we'll have to stop you now. Okay. Yeah. So, Samya, like broadly, can I understand uh, who is your target audience in this particular product? Uh, see, my target audience are adults because most of the adults uh, are interested or kind of bookworm or they are interested in reading, but they switch to ebooks or online platform for that but they they are not understanding that library is some kind of it's a peaceful institution and where you can where you can understand it's like a 
library is like a hospital for mine for me like where you can rejuvenate your mind and where you can learn or learn or in, uh, enlighten your skills more so you're trying to sell the ambience is it yeah all like right not okay. ambience it's just like creating an environment so that they yeah, yeah. somya somya that's that's something which bothered me when you said that uh, you want to merge cafe with library because as you said it's a peaceful environment right and we are a library one thing that we have to follow is silence yeah so that everyone can concentrate and read so if you open a cafe inside the library then that's going to make a lot of noise so how will you manage that the availability of copy i can understand but i am not very sure about cafe so could you please explain what is your strategy like not uh, appropriately building a cafe it's just like mm -hmm. we can share one corner for library like one floor for library and one floor for cafes and there are very noise cancellation device which can be implemented in library so that noise can be cut on so this is my particular idea mm -hmm. Okay, well done, Somya. Do you have any questions for us? Ah, uh, no. Okay, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Welcome to Nalsar. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Somya. Next is Vinodini. Yeah, you were. Uh, you can present now. Hi Vinodini, could you please switch on your camera? You can start. Is my camera on? No, we know. Dini, we are not able to see you. A second. Yeah. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Vinodini Jayal. a uh, first year student of law and this is my first time i'm participating in this kind of uh, competitions so very good very good appreciate it thank you now let me move on to my presentation now my obsolete product is board games and why board games first of all it brings joy and happiness within us like we can feel our uh, victory solid in online games we cannot feel our victory in solid because we are uh, able to win continuously because of uh, they'll give hints they'll give us uh, what kind of bonus and all so when we play board games it is like original so we can feel the happiness for real then the second is we can build a relations very closely and, and it strengthens relations uh, from, uh because uh, we got into online games uh, so intensely nowadays we are uh, not communicating with our parents at all so this strengthens our relations next it reduces screen time so we when we uh, come uh, when we come from the screen time uh, we'll like we'll explore many things right so it will be very uh, interesting to play board games and then it will offer valuable teachings for children so children will wait for the round for their rounds and they'll accept their uh, failures uh, with courage so my target audience is children and old age people so it connects uh, both of them and why uh, this board games has become obsolete because phones have over overtaken 
all these board games and video games are uh, more interesting than the board games so and board games uh, are very difficult to maintain right so my marketing strategy is i'll cover all the old age homes and uh, uh, sponsor board games and conduct uh, many competitions like tournaments among the old age homes so with uh, media coverage and this will impact uh, many homes and many old age people will buy board games and then uh, since my target audience also includes children i'll sponsor board games to schools also so they can uh, use board games in their play times uh, and my brand will also become popular there so i'll sponsor uh, board games among the teens like those who have less uh, uh, those have less education support right in like uh, many slum like areas i'll sponsor uh, tournaments there and conduct tournaments uh, among the teens who are living there so this also make them uh, this also take them to the next level and they'll also get interest in other than education those who are not having that educational support then this will help us to build communications uh, when we are playing board games this will help us to communicate uh, to all the people who are playing with us then then i'll advertise my uh, brand with very uh, intense emotions and nostalgic feels because uh, board games were very popular uh, back in those days right so i'll trigger them with that nostalgic feelings so they'll again come back to this uh, board games then i'll uh, do b2b partnerships with uh, such it companies because uh, certainly there will be a game spot uh, to reduce stresses among uh, the it companies so i will also partnering with the uh, it companies then next i will create social media trend i'll uh, ask the influencers to uh, put up a challenge so that uh, uh, those who are following that influencers can also participate in the board games then i'll be uh, sustainability focused uh, this coins and dice are uh, being plastic and this will lead to some global warming crisis and all so i'll try to do my sustain uh, do my board games with woods and uh, other than like uh, eco friendly things then i'll post my board games in kids magazines covers also so kids can easily attracted and giving free gifts uh, free gifts uh, in the uh, with uh, some other uh, notebooks or pencil uh, will attract more children like uh, like what kinder joy is doing uh, kinder joy has very little amount of chocolate and kids are buying that for uh, toys no like that i'll give free attractive gifts then uh, most of the parents nowadays are uh, uh, like surfing on the internet about parenting so to uh, get our uh, kids from the like mobile phones and computers uh, we can also take them to board game centers and play with them so that's all thank you vinodini well tried i mean it's very detailed your presentation really appreciate your presentation very detailed uh, so vinodini can i exactly understand the target group of your product old age people and children so i mean i wanted specific uh, age group age group uh, like uh, from 60s to 90s and from 0 to uh, like 14 years okay so uh, 60 to 90 uh, why do you think that age group would be a, a, a an, an attractive uh, target group because uh, after 60s uh, most of the people uh, will be settled uh, settled and they have a more time so 
nowadays old age people have become uh, very lonely right so if board games are there they would uh, not feel that much loneliness so in fact i, I are the uh, people of 60 to 90 really feeling bored because now you have television you have uh, youtube you have netflix you have so many uh, avocations yeah uh, in developed areas uh, we have that kind of things but uh, when the old age people uh, who are not having uh, resources for uh, television and youtubes and all they can uh, this board uh, game will help okay. them right so vinodini i just want to ask a question here because we mentioned this so we are talking about uh, new rural areas right or yeah. uh, who don't have access to many things that kind of uh, the population you are talking about right so um, so far as this board games are concerned uh, as you know that uh, with the board you have uh, instructions and all that but mostly so if the instruction leaflet that we have uh, instructions are given in both the language mostly in hindi and english it is given right yeah, but uh, on the board it is uh, normally it is written in uh, english only So, what is your solution to this problem? Uh, because the kind we of population use, you are targeting to, hmm. yeah, we can use okay. sign languages like arrow marks and kind of hmm. uh, like picturizing things there. Okay. So, that, is is that enough to understand the game? Do you think it's enough to understand the game? Yeah, most people in rural areas will buy uh, games which they already knew. So okay. Mhm. Mm so maybe uh, first thing uh, yes, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, maybe we can use sign languages and pictureizing uh, the ways to play instructions. Mhm. Mm okay. So one thing I must tell you that um, uh, you have a lovely thought, okay? Whatever you have planned is very good and uh, about the uh, product that you are talking about, the material that you are going to use for your dies and coins and all that. Um, very, very impressive. Um, what do you think, uh, uh, Vinodini, what, uh, what are some of the major challenges uh, for uh, the person who is involved in sales and marketing process? Of, of what the are the difficulties for this particular product of board games? uh what i think is uh, nowadays video uh, nobody is willing to play board games because mm -hmm. they are not aware of uh, their the advantages so video games and mobile phones are there so why do we want to buy they'll have a exactly. thought like why do we have exactly. to buy so yeah even your board games can be played on a smartphone yes, and you need space also for, to keep that and then you have to always arrange all of them and then keep it. yes so now it is people are they, they are playing the ludo right online yeah. ludo and online you know chess so cool. no, yes so it's replacing that is games but we understand it's like completely different feeling when you are playing a board game and when you are playing on phone so that that's true um any anything else That's it. Uh, thank you so much, Vinodini. It was a pleasure talking to you. Do you have any questions for us? No, thank you. Okay, thank you. The thought process that you have today, just uh, keep it. Okay, that's going to help you a lot uh, in the long run. Yeah. Huh? Thank you so much. All the best, Vinodini. That was a nice presentation, Vinodini. Uh, so next we'll be having Muskan Jain, and we'll be presenting the PPT. Hello, am I audible? Am I audible? Yes, yes, yes you are. Yes. You are. Uh, so good morning, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ms. Tan Zain, and I'm a first year student from Ramses College, Delhi University. Yeah, so. my product is a uh, leaf utensils and i have named my product as leaf it with areta um our usp is go green go personalized utensils that suit your need next slide please
yeah about my product and reasons for choosing it so first of all i would like to tell that we aim at manufacturing leaf utensils both general as well as personalized uh, and they are made from areca palm leaf so i chose this product because of several reasons first of all the most important reason is that this product is eco friendly so we do not uh, take leaves from plants directly we uh, take pollen areca leaves and then they are manufactured and processed and converted into utensils so in this way we don't use any chemicals or any um, additives it is completely natural and uh, it gets decomposed into the soil very easily so it enriches the soil in a manner um next point is they are highly convenient to use they are easy to carry they are easy to use and they are durable as well also the properties of areca leaves are such that they can be stored in hot as well as cold temperatures and there won't be any deformation also they can be molded in different shapes and sizes according to uh, our customers convenience and that is why it is preferable next is um, the taste using plastic products changes the taste of the food however this is not the case with areca palm next the most important thing um, is that there is a ban on single use plastic products that will be um, with uh, that will be into force from 1 july 2022 onwards so that will give us the first mover advantage and a very good opportunity to present our leaf utensils to people um when i researched about it the fourth reason i found out that demand is actually increasing it, it is actually picking up in the market however supply is uh, not that much that they can meet the demand so that is another edge that we get, get and not just in domestic markets international markets will be there is a lot of scope of leaf utensil next uh, doing all this while we'll be uh, setting up our uh, manufacturing unit in some backward areas uh, this will help tribal population Uh, to gain employment since they have a local know how of all these uh, plants and leaf utensils and also there would be uh, our social responsibility will be fulfilled in two ways next slide please yeah talking about the target audience so we basically have the motive of tapping social occasions that involve buffet tables Uh, like there are restaurants there are hotels bars pubs cafes all the types of uh, eateries and uh, we tap those places weddings marriages all those things we are tapping also there are two reasons uh, why our product would flourish because first of all lifestyles are changing and there is change in the food habits of people and people are preferring takeaways keeping in mind covid uh, perspective and all so people are preferring disposable plates and uh, we offer disposable plates at leafed with areca uh, which is since single use plastic products are going to be banned so this will again give us an edge next is uh, this will help restaurants in saving their resources since they would not be they would not have to spend much on uh, cleaning and maintenance of the utensils it would be a single time use product and yeah we manufacture uh, durable products too that can be used again and again we offer both the types of products um uh, so it would enable the restaurants to instead spend their resources on another uh, facilities like customer support etc next slide yeah uh, market segmentation there are four types of i have divided it into four categories first is geography so we are covering whole of india and more emphasis is being laid out on south indian population next is a uh, demographic so we cover people irrespective of their ages and gender and then lower and middle income people would be more attracted to the product since it is affordable and it is not a luxury product so upper uh, uh, class people might not be so much willing to purchase it then psychological aspect those people who are emotionally connected to the environment and since green consumerism is on a rise so we can assume that there will be a lot of consumers who are willing to buy the product next is behavioral so we can reach out to uh, reach out to the people based on their online searches like uh, if people are searching something related to wedding if they have wedding in place or uh, if people are searching something related to environment they are uh, emotionally attached to environment then we can tap people according to their searches too. next slide please yeah marketing strategy 
तो एज आर यू एस पी से गो ग्रीन गो पर्सनलाइज यूटेंसिल्स दैट सूट योर नीड तो वी प्लेस वी टेक ऑर्डर्स फ्रॉम आर कस्टमर्स बेस्ड ऑन देयर नीड्स एंड वी गिव देम कस्टमाइज एंड पर्सनलाइज प्रोडक्ट सो देर आर वेरियस वेज फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल देयर कैन बी एन ऑनलाइन ऐप थ्रू विच वी आर कैरिंग आउट ऑल द ट्रांजेक्शन we can use amazon and flipkart uh, flipkart like all these platforms then there can be online promotion using social media and there can be involvement of influencers since uh, today's generation we are seeing lot of people are influenced by actors actresses and also that can be one um then next is um, awareness campaign yeah building consumer perception is a very important aspect so if there is awareness campaign about the benefits of green utensils and uh, all the benefits that are being offered by these utensils it it is it will just boost our sales um we can also advertise through malls hotels cafes we can bundle our products and uh, like wholesale may we can uh, provide the products to them and through that we can advertise our product uh, next slide please yeah promotion so i had a i had an idea of a marketing campaign whereby a booth will be set up in some major cities like bangalore and delhi and it will be popularized uh, through various influencers and uh, in that booth we'll be keeping our green utensils and it would be whole campaign uh, promoting the green utensils uh, especially the areka and the one which we are offering and there would be a bin kept outside uh, of the booth and if people are disposing of some plastic products in that bin we will be offering a gift of our leaf utensils to them so that was one aggressive marketing technique which i had thought of another is um yeah this will be accompanied by an online campaign uh, it will be promoted by influencers so that more people are tapped and i would like to go with a mix of b2b and b2c um also yeah that is it uh, next slide uh revival so first of all i would like to address various uh, problems why the product is not picking up as much demand as it should so first is it is not the cheapest second people find the look a bit unattractive then the texture is rough and the plastic products uh, are a major reason why people are not switching to these green products so uh, the last problem is solved since they will be banned with effect from 1st july 2022 um coming to first problem that they are not the cheapest so um we can bring the cost down and the price down by uh, if we are establishing the manufacturing unit near areas where there is easy availability of areka leaves then the cost would definitely come down second is um yeah we will be able to uh, there is a benefit associated we will be able to create employment opportunities among tribal population if we are setting it in backward areas and areas where Uh, there is easy availability of areca leaves second is setting up in backward areas would enable us to uh, avail government subsidies and also since we are a green product a uh, government will definitely we are uh, focusing on waste management by uh, picking up fallen areca leaves so that will be another thing we will get financial support from government that will help us in reducing Ustan, our cost uh usan i'm afraid i'll have to stop you uh Muskan. Yeah, Muskan can. Uh, time is up. So, Muskan, what is your distribution strategy? I was uh, trying to understand that particular thing. It is actually a B two B and B two C, both of them. So, it is a two way distribution channel. First of all, we'll sell our products to wholesalers and then to retailers, and then it will reach to our customers. Second is um, we will have our own app through which customers directly. they will place orders with us and we'll be uh, reaching out to them and giving them customized products according to their needs okay uh, muskan uh, so I, there's a little uh, you know um, no, uh, lack of clarity here so if you're doing a direct uh, d2c which is through your app you have zero level distribution okay if you have a wholesaler then retailer then the consumer you have a two level distribution uh, chain here all right so don't you think uh, for because uh, you for you to establish the brand you will first have to concentrate on d2c so where the margins are higher instead of yeah. going to your yeah actually yeah. right we can first focus on d2c and as our business expands we can move towards to the two way channel 
okay two way channel yeah two level channel right two level channel sorry all right all right okay uh, do you have any other questions for us muskan um, no thank you okay thank you so much muskan it has been a pleasure talking to you thank you yeah thank you muskan so uh, this is what this was our last presentation so a warm welcome for everyone here and uh, it was a great presentation by everyone and uh, i really thank the judges here for being there and then thank you yeah so and, and all the presentations were really great and thank you for making pictures a great event so the results will be out on 7th so we'll get back to you on 7th thank you so much thank you thank you thank you Our participants, welcome to Eloquentia, an event in Geno 2022. So now we'll be starting with the war of words that you fantastic orators bring here. And before that, we need to go through a bit of guidelines and a set of instructions that we need you to follow to win the big cash prize that we have kept for, kept for you. So that will be explained to you by Edwin. Hello, participants, welcome to Eloquentia of Geno 2022. A competition for the war of words for all talented speakers present here. We will be briefing all the required rules and regulations now. If the rules are not followed, it can directly affect all your points. All candidates will be grouped randomly into teams. Each team will be shown a picture resembling the corporate world. All teams will get a total of three minutes to come up with a storyline pertinent to the picture given. The moderators in your breakout session will pick someone and ask him to present his storyline. The story has to be under 30 seconds. An alarm will be rung at the end of 30 seconds to indicate that the candidate has exhausted his time limit. After this, we enter into the group discussion round. The objective of the discussion is to come up with a single storyline. The team will have four minutes to discuss amongst themselves. The judgment criteria are as follows: presentation, relatability of the story to the given picture, assertiveness, leadership, and practicality of the storyline. All the decisions taken by the judges are final and non-questionable. All the best, guys, and may the best speaker win. The judges for today's sessions are Mr. Ramesh and Mr. Vichu. Professor Ramesh has done his PhD in corporate management and have a year of experience in the understanding of the interfaces of the human mind. He has participated in and won the various speech and debate competition. Our next judge, Mr. Vichu. He has a PhD in English and has a teaching experience of more than 25 years. And after securing the first position of state in the PhD exam, she has been an avid debater and a quizzer. And during her school and college years, she has won the various prizes. Now let's have a breakout session. Participants, please wait for a two minutes. We will have a breakout session. The competition will begin. Uh, can I make a statement, sir? Before you break out, you have any doubts? Ask them. So that later there is no confusion regarding the rules. Participant, do you have any doubts? Please, this is the time to clear it. Thank you. Please wait patiently. We will break you into your sessions in five minutes. Thank you. Uh, am I audible? I will leave. Karam. Hello. Yes. Yes, Shivam. Yeah. 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 Shivam, the side. Uh, actually, uh, one of my uh, um, me and Rohan Pandey have participated in this event, but Rohan couldn't make it because of some family commitments. So, uh, am I allowed? To, am I eligible still in this uh, uh, competition or? It's a single participation, so you can participate by yourself. Perfect. Thank you. All the best. We see you. Thank you. Yes, we will please ask your question. Um, thank you. I just wanted to ask. After the picture is shown, we will be having three minutes to think about ourselves for our storyline, and then thirty second to present our storyline. Am I right? Yes, exactly. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> 